Well, it's time for another installment of Grindhouse Purgatory. But first... A little something to take the edge off. It's fucking cold outside. But a couple of shows ago, I was talking about some stuff that um, showed up on late night TV. And since then, I've never seen it. Well, I found one of them. Shack Out on 101. This one was from 1955. Now, this was one of a handful of uh, 50s films that dealt with the, quote, red menace. Uh, communism, the infiltration, things like that. Um, Shack Out on 101 is this little decrepit diner where it seems like the owner, George, played by Keenan Wynn, the waitress, Cotty, played by uh, Terry Moore, and the cook, Slob, played by Lee Marvin, all live on the premises. Now, the star of uh, this uh, extravaganza, the two leads are Terry Moore, who was in Mighty Joe Young, and Frank Lovejoy, who uh, wouldn't have really been my choice for a leading man. He usually played bulldog-like characters like cops and detectives. He did a couple westerns. He did a lot of TV. But for as far as a romantic lead, uh, it was sort of like watching Terry Moore suck face with J. Edgar Hoover. But it wasn't great. Um, so, yeah, those are the two stars. But the guy who is the real star of this thing is none other than Lee Marvin. It was an early appearance. Uh, Lee chewed a lot of scenery in this film, and he also uh, formed a lifelong friendship with uh, Keenan Wynn, who played George. Uh, Whit Bissell plays Eddie, a friend of George, who uh, has this um, fear of violence because he was in WW2, and him and George are planning to go down to um, the Gulf of Mexico and go scuba diving to shoot Poncho. I guess Poncho is a shark or some kind of sea creature. It's never clearly explained. But this is a whole bonding thing with these people in there, but someone is selling secrets to a foreign government. Now, the professor, played by um, Frank Lovejoy, is always in there talking to Slob, and Slob is selling him seashells for some reason. Also, this is pissing off Cotty because she feels that she's been played for second banana. So she sucks up to Slob and George and other people during the course of the film, but her real thing is the professor. So anyway, a fisherman comes in, played by Len Lesser, character actor, who basically slips Slob something. Slob slips him a little bit of money and goes in and looks, has this thing under his bunk, this sea chest, where he pulls out something and looks like something called microfilm, which has a bunch of characters on it, which I'm assuming are atomic secrets, because that seemed to be what was going on. The professor was involved with atomic secrets. And the mastermind of this ring is Mr. Gregory. And the professor is sitting with Slob saying, you know, I can call the president and get in touch with him within 15 minutes or so, but for whatever reason, I can't seem to meet this uh, Mr. Gregory you're always talking about. Well, anyway, uh, Slob and the, the sea captain uh, have this wonderful little game they play where they put a towel in each other's mouths and beat the shit out of each other. I guess whoever lets go with the towel loses. Kim, uh, George breaks this up. He's also very suspicious of this uh, creepy fisherman. So, the whole thing boils down to, it, it, it's like somebody is selling secrets and some scientists are disappearing. Actually, the scientists are being kidnapped by this mysterious Mr. Gregory. Well, one scientist comes in drunk and, and upset as uh, Slob and the professor are conducting their seashell business. Um, Cotty is, is looking over this thing where basically um, this uh, scientist, played by none other than Frank Dakova, uh, who you would all know is Chief Wild Eagle from F Troop, but in reality Frank Dakova was uh, a college professor who turned actor and uh, co-starred with Charles Bronson in a bunch of films, uh, Machine Gun Kelly, The Stone Killer, and Run of the Arrow uh, for a few. Um, 
Anyway, he comes in all upset, and he basically is going to go to the law, and when he turns around, Slob stabs him in the back. Then he says to the professor, don't worry, I'll take care of it, I'll get rid of the whole thing. So now, this whole meeting of Mr. Gregory uh, goes sour because uh, the professor's body was supposed to be disposed of by the ship captain, but unfortunately, this fisherman didn't wait the guy down enough, and he bobbed to the surface and was found. With the stab wound in his back, it's murder. So now, there's two guys that are basically undercover agents that are pos posing as poultry deliverers. And they come into the, the, the uh, shack a lot and uh, get thrown out by George because they're, everybody's hitting on Cotty. Cotty is like, everybody is hitting on her. And she knows it. So what nobody knows is these two guys are feds and they're conferring with the professor who is also undercover. The sea captain, as he's driving away, sees them conferring in, in a filling station. Of course, he tells this to Slob and Slob says, okay, we're, we're sort of screwed because these guys have ransacked his room at this point and found something. Um, he tells the fishermen to meet him by a beach, bring up the dinghy, and he's bringing... Uh, some passengers. He basically tells the professor and Cotty that, yes, you're you're going. You're going with, and uh, one of you is not going to make it because you're going to wind up in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, they also have George in this, but what happened was Eddie was outside and they didn't see Eddie, so Eddie sneaks back in. Now, when they had bought all their equipment to go down to Mexico to go scuba diving, they had a harpoon gun. And Eddie has got his eyes on the harpoon gun and gets it. Uh, Slob is trying to organize this little quick uh, out the door onto the dinghy thing when uh, the fisherman beaches the dinghy but is fired on by the two agents and he shoots back, killing one of them. He gets killed. Slob realizes his time is up. He runs out the door and Eddie fires the harpoon, killing Slob off camera because it's 50s, we can't show that gory shit. Um, it's a tight little film. It's an interesting little film. Runs about 73 minutes, which basically gave uh, the networks about, I'd say, 17 minutes worth of commercial ads they can put in. And there was some, I'm not talking regular commercials, I'm talking weird ass commercials like uh, DTI, the Driver Training Institute. Yes, you can become a trucker and go over the open road and have your CB and chatter and shit like that. Well, that was really hot for a while, and the other one I remember was an oddball. It was called JGE. Um, the catch phrase was, hey, Jerry, what's the story? The story is, if you're a union member, blah, 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 you can come in here and buy shit cheap. I don't know how that worked out. There's probably those commercials on YouTube. But, yeah, there was, it was a whole host of weird shit and infomercials that uh, came out uh, during these uh, late-night things. Like I said, this thing probably ran, oh, half o'clock in the morning, maybe one two, three o'clock sometimes. I mean, it ran a few times. It was Allied Artists. And like I say, this one sort of uh, slipped through the cracks. But thanks to all the films, it's been resurrected on a great Blu-ray widescreen and everything. And like I said, it's an interesting film, uh, despite the fact that the romantic lead and the hero, uh, Frank Lovejoy, doesn't really seem up to par. Um, Frank's father was a salesman for Path Films, Frank, unfortunately, was doing some theater in Teaneck when he suffered a massive heart attack at age 50 in New York and passed away. Um, sad, but he was one of those, you know, 50s guys that was in a lot of TV and a lot of, like, action-type films. But as far as a leading man, I didn't really fucking work here. And like I said, the real star of the film is Lee Marvin because he chews, he chews a lot of scenery. So, um... Hey, if you want to blow a couple bucks, definitely worth a look. You know, and like I said, it sort of epit it epitomizes the whole Red Scare thing that we had to deal with during the 50s. The duck and cover, going to your desk in case there's an atomic uh, blast. And you know something? That may make a lot of sense because I wasn't thinking of it back then. But when you look up under those desks when you were in grade school, there was enough chewing gum on there that would probably circumvent any radiation getting through. So, yeah. Shack Out on 101 from 1955. Good film.